With this Houdini return, I have it partially already filled out, so I don't have to uh, waste your time with me typing. But what I like to do, especially when I go through some of these problems, and I have to, I, it would probably be best if you went ahead and printed out the directions that I gave you on the Houdini and make little notes maybe in the margins as you go through. So, so far, what I've, I've already put in the, um, the husband and wife's name here, Larry and Martha Houdini, along with their social security number. You can make up an address if you want. It's not important necessarily for this one, uh, especially since I didn't give you one, but you can make it up. The uh, date of birth I gave you, I went ahead and put in the, the two children's names. Notice here, um, one of the new things we learned this week about the child uh, tax credit, our daughter Dorothy is too old to be able to qualify for the child tax credit. Remember, you need to be 16 or younger. So that's why there's no X here, whereas with John, there definitely will be born only in 2012. I've also put in the two W-2s. Um, note, if you ha add up the 37,000 plus the 34,000, it is 71,000. The uh, box 12A code D, remember that is our retirement benefits for Larry. And then for Martha, I went ahead and acted like she was the uh, person who, whose uh, work paid for the health care premiums, and so she probably paid in too. So that's what the code DD stands for. The 5600 there is just showing that they did have health care insurance. And we do we do want to put those in when we're entering in our W-2s. I also give you Dorothy's W-2 information, but hopefully you'll know by now that that's just um, extra information. We would actually have to file a separate return if we wanted to do Dorothy's. Um, and probably we would get back most, if not all, of the $277 that she had taken out for federal holdings. Now, the two key things, can we claim our two kids? And the only one that's really in question, because John would definitely fall in the category of being a young child, and he lived with us and we paid for over half the support, is Dorothy. And if we do the math, she was born in 97, and we are looking at it like it's the end of 2015. She is definitely uh, 23 or younger, so she would fall under that category. She lives at uh, school, so that counts as living at home. And it tells us in the main directions that she is, does provide, that the parents do provide over half her support. So once I get in the, the, the W-2s, what I want to start doing is looking at Larry and the money he got for school. Even, so one of the things I like to do first, before I even go to the tax return, I could go right into the tax return at this point if I wanted to. But also on the side, I like to kind of get a, an idea of how much tuition did he have to pay and how much of it was free money. So off to the side, I added up. He had 7000 total given to Ivy Tech. Then we need to take away the refund, the 4600 So in total, his tuition bill would have been $2,400. However, out of the 24 of his tuition, 3500 was free money. So when we do the math, we're going to get a negative number. When we do 2400 Minus the free money of 3500 like our notes say for this chapter, that's going to be an $1,100 negative, which is free money, which that's going to be included now when we start doing it. This 71000 will soon be 721. So let's start there. We could go here if we wanted to, but it's probably easiest and much easier to find the education form that we're going to need to fill out here in the education credit uh, section. So we go to the education credit section and we need to add copy for student information. We need to come over here and click on uh, who we're talking about, Larry. You have to put that in. If you skip this step, it won't calculate for you. And we can answer some of these questions here. Um, if, if it doesn't say, we'll assume the, the normal answer. So was a student enrolled and eligible? Yeah, Ivy Tech is. He's looking for the accounting degree, yes. He was part of the degree program. Did he, did he take at least half time? Well, with the tuition being 2400 for just the final semester, or yeah, for the uh, just for the fall semester, that would probably be full time. 
So yes, or at least half time, definitely at least half time. It doesn't say anything about being convicted of uh, distributing a controlled substance. He's getting ready to finish up his two-year degree, so he's most likely, unless told otherwise, zero to three years completed, and zero to three years of the HOPE or American Opportunity Credit. And the following qualifications apply um, on the student's return only. Was the student exempt, exemption claimed by someone else? No. Do conditions one, two, and three apply? Was the student under 18? Definitely not. He's our he's the parent. So as you can see here, we qualify for all three options. Whatever one will give us the most money, that's the one we want to take. However, in this situation, we actually uh, got free money. We actually got a refund, and some of it was free money, not even our loans. And the program, how this program is set up, this is not necessarily how all programs are set up, especially if we're if we're doing uh, real tax returns with the VITA program, it's not set up quite like this. But with this program, what we can easily do it go in and do is we already determined what the tuition and fees were. So I can go ahead and type that in, uh, 2,400, and I'm going to pretend I didn't get it on a 1099-T just so I can type it right in. So we have 2,400 of uh, tuition and fees, and then I want to come down here. These are the only two areas I really want to plug in. How much scholarship and grants did I get? Out of the 2400 tuition, I got $3,500 in free money. So with all the calculation, what that's telling me now here, line 14, that 1100 that I calculated, that was a negative number on my prior calculations, that's actually going to be taxable scholarship income as it shows here. The remaining 2400 was used for uh, school purposes, so that's tax-free. As you, as if you notice, it did change my refund, and if I go back to my 1040, it's no longer 71,000. It's now 72,100 because of that extra 1,100 being added in. So Larry is taken care of. I'm ready now for Dorothy. I'm going to go down to the education area and click on another one instead of. For, here, uh, for Larry, I'm going to add a copy and do similar for Dorothy. Now, with Dorothy, she doesn't, um, it doesn't say that she gets back a refund because she actually doesn't. If we go through and do the same thing for Dorothy, she took out a loan for 12000 and she received 5500 in grants, 2500 of a scholarship, so in total, she received $20,000 given to LSU in items non-cash. It says normal tuition and books is $17,000 with room and board being an extra seven. So she actually has to pay in $24,000 and she only has twenty dollars right now. So she's definitely not going to get a refund. She's still going to be $4,000 shy. Um, but she's probably going to get a bill from LSU. And then she has a part-time job of $5,500. Again, that's going to be extra information for us doing uh, Larry and, Dor and Martha's return. Uh, Dorothy would have to do her own return of the 5500 and not claim herself and not claim any of her education because the parents here are actually going to be the ones claiming her, therefore claiming her education credits. So let's answer the question. Was she enrolled, yes, in an eligible education in an institution? In a degree program, yes, we're going to assume yes, that she was part of a degree. Taking part-time, I would hope so, for 17000 No, no felony convictions. She just started as her freshman year, so therefore she couldn't have taken the American Opportunity Credit for more than three years. And these questions are almost always going to be no, or we hope it's no. So was a student claimed on uh, someone else's return? No, she's claimed on our return. Now, for her, if she was doing this herself, she would click yes, because she was claimed on somebody else's return. And she is not under the age of 18. She's actually, I think, 19 or 20 um, for this tax year. But she was definitely not under 18. She, I think she was, eh, she might have been 18, exactly. So she does qualify for the, the three credits here, or the three options. Two of them are credits, one's a deduction. So we can go ahead and put in here, what's our tuition and fees? Our tuition and fees totaled up to be 17000 
It does give us a place for um, room and board, although it's not going to really come into play in calculations, but I can go ahead and put it in to 7,000. And then I need to come down here and put how much of it was scholarships and grants. And when I added up the 5,500 and the 2,500, that was 8,000. So the calculation tells me um, how much qualified education expenses, 17,000 of it was actually qualified. Um, Tax-free scholarships, 8,000. Here we go. This is what I was looking for. The to total qualified expenses that I can actually use towards the American Opportunity Credit is 9,000. Remember the 9,000? We're cut off at 4,000, so even though it's 9, we're going to still have to cut it off at 4. So at this point, the calculation is going to be done for us. But it, if we wanted to go back, and which I would recommend, is I would go into the 8863 form. Again, that's 8863. And that shows here the education credit. Here's the form number. And let's see how this 1500, and then note, we got an extra 1,000 down here for the American Opportunity Credit refundable portion. Because, remember, she gets to take all 2,500 since she had over 4,000 in expenses. So 4,000 times 40%, remember you could take 40% here. So that's where this 1,000 comes from. And then the remaining 1,500 gets placed up here in the non-refundable credits. But we still have plenty of tax liability to take care of that 1,500, so I can use all 1,500 as we talked about in class. So 5,600, we still have, as you can see, 3,100 left of tax liability that I could potentially use somewhere up here. And some of it will be for the last part with John's daycare. Now, one thing that I did as I was going in and putting in John for his dependent information, I did the normal stuff that he was our son, lived with us for 12 months. And then I scrolled down here because one of the questions is, enter the qualified expenses that you incurred and paid. Qualified expenses means actually items out of your pocket, not FSA. We actually paid 1,200 in expenses that we can count. And so if I enter this here, that's going to just be one less place I have to enter it in somewhere else and maybe forget to do it. So again, this was just on the main sheet where I've entered in John's information. So at this point, I want to go back to the 1040 to the credits and go to the child independent care credit. Click on it. And then if I scroll down, we're going to be filling in up here. But they've already, since I put in that 1200, they've already put in that John did have qualified expenses of 1200. But Nothing's showing up yet because I haven't filled in the top information. As we discussed in class, you have to have the name of the company, their, so, their EIN or Social Security, and their address, as well as how much you paid in total. So let's go ahead and do that at this point. Um, this isn't an individual. It is a company. So I'm going to come down here, and I'm going to enter in Mysterious Daycare. Again, Mysterious because we're talking about musicians, they're all kind of in the same boat. 35 is our ID number, 35-123456-7. And then the last part, how much did I actually, oh, get in the address. 123 8th Street, Indiana, 46013. How much did I actually pay the full amount? Again, they want to double check that what you put in here, did the daycare actually receive that, and did they claim it on their taxes? So I put in the full 3600 here. So the 3600 shows here, but what it's actually going to calculate for my uh, credit, it's going to only use the 1200 because that was uh, less the FSA. And when I do the calculation, this is doing a lot of the same things that we did in class. It's going to look at my AGI, which is 72.1. So I'm definitely, oh, I'm at the lowest bracket here, 20%. So they're going to give me 20% of the 1200 which happens to be $240. So I can go back now to the 1040, and there on line 49, now shows up the $240 of child independent care expenses. Total refund should be $4,034.
and that would conclude our return for Harry or uh, actually Larry Houdini.